Let's be in an attitude of worship and prayer. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. It is a pleasure and privilege to be with you this morning. How many of you were awake at 12.30 last night when the rain came pouring down? I can see a couple hands went up. So, I know we need the rain and uh, we're grateful for that. <coughs> we are grateful that the uh, weather has been pretty temperate the last couple weeks, so uh, we are very happy about that. Um, Anna's fine. Her car is not. So that's kind of the story of, of Anne's situation this morning. Um, so we are going to sing everything a cappella. And I offered to start the songs, and Phyllis Martin said, well, no. we'll let Phyllis do it. <laughs> so I'm perfectly okay with that. Um, so the good news is, is all the songs that we're going to sing this morning should be extremely familiar to you, so you should, we should not have any issues. Um, with that, let me turn it over to Bobby for our announcements this morning. <clears throat> this, um, good, morning. good morning. This coming Wednesday night is um, council meeting. Council meeting is at 7 o'clock, and I remind all church leaders that um, the church conference reports are due October the 1st. I must input all of your reports, so if you could get those re reports to me yesterday, that would be wonderful. <laughs> trying to make a joke out of it. I'm not good at jokes. Um, the next um, announcement we want to talk about is Operation Christmas Child. We are still in need of Sunday school supplies, especially back to school sales are going on right now. So um, if you can pick some, some of those objects up, it's greatly appreciated. Uh, Donna is willing to shop for those who wish to donate funds, and you can also donate to cover uh, shipping. Uh, costs. Uh, also, um, uh, we want to say that you can include games and toys. We're in the midst of collecting games and toys also. That wasn't on my, my um, bulletin here, but I remember that we added that, uh, the games and toys. And, and again, just little toys. Um, go to McDonald's, get a kid's meal and bring that in. <laughs> they have no type of thing. Um, uh, the uh, next announcement is for us to check um, our pantries and to pick up non-perishable items. Again, we appreciate your bringing in cereal each week for our sale in United Methodist Church and canned goods. From those canned goods, we may glean a couple of the cans to put into our pantry, but the rest we give to Salem United Methodist Church. Uh, also, one of the announcements that wasn't, um, uh, we didn't put on there was the flea market yesterday. We uh, had a successful flea market yesterday. We were able to deposit $687 just from the flea market, but the total deposit yesterday um, from uh, previous, uh, three other flea market sales was 902 so we are most appreciative of that. As you know, that money goes towards our mission and outreach um, uh, activities here at church and besides. Um, we are most thankful to all the volunteers. You know, it takes many volunteers to get ready for those flea markets and, and um, be able to greet and welcome all the people that come, and we are appreciative for all those volunteers and all the people who came to uh, purchase so that uh, just the thrift shop made $399. And if I'm right, uh, Michelle, some of your items were 50% off, uh, clothing and household goods and, and 
uh, things like that. So you figure it was almost $400 and at 50% off. So uh, we are happy to be able to be part of the creation moment to uh, offer items at 50% of our low prices to begin with um, to help um, reuse uh, donations to the thrift shop. Um, also, we extend a welcome to all who are able to be with us in the sanctuary this morning, but also to all those that are joining us online. We appreciate your attendance at home and hope to, uh, that you tune in every Sunday for our services. Um, we welcome uh, you in person at any time in our sanctuary at 1015. Only God knows what we can come out of our gathering. My staple has come off, or half off on some of them, so I'm so glad our pages are numbered in case I would drop them. Um, it is the time for us as brothers and sisters in Christ to pass the peace with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. We pass that peace with everyone here and in our congregation. And we pass that peace as brothers and sisters in Christ because this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day.
creation moment this morning. And our creation moment, as Louise is well aware, is something that I have been living quite a bit for the past two weeks. Baltimore County has a sustainability challenge for county employees. And we have a four-week challenge that we are halfway through. The first week we consider energy conservation techniques, things as simple as turning your lights and your computers off at the end of the day. This past week we had solid waste reduction, which was everything from reusable pens, reusable coffee mugs and water jugs, those kinds of things. Um, I actually did a, a small waste audit in my house to see what we were throwing out and what we were recycling. The third week is sustainable reducing emissions, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. And the final week will be sustainable eating. So this coming week we are looking at reducing emissions. And reducing emissions is important for cost savings, it is important for pollution issues. So some of the things that we can do to reduce emissions include carpooling, public transit, walking or biking to work, using natural light in our houses wherever possible, planting trees, adding indoor plants, which is important for your indoor situation, keeping thermostats at 78 degrees in the summer, and 68 degrees in winter, eco-friendly cleaners, and finally electric or hybrid vehicles. God calls us to care for creation and preserve resources for future generations. We pray that we will be good stewards of what God has provided, and the people of God say, Amen. Would you stand and join me in the call to worship? Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house. We thank you for the opportunity to praise and worship you. Open our hearts and minds to your word. Prepare us to serve your kingdom and your people. Lord, Help us to use heavenly wisdom. Keep us away from earthly wisdom. Help us to submit ourselves to God. Help us to make the devil flee. You may be seated. We have all fallen short of God's glory. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just. He will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God calls us to return to him. In humility and faith, let us confess our sins to God. Would you join me in the unison prayer of confession? Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are sorry and we humbly repent. Have mercy and Give us so, so that, that we may turn away from sin, sin and, and back, back to you. Amen. Amen. God 
is merciful and has promised to forgive the sins of all who repent and turn to him in faith. May God have mercy on you and pardon your sins. May he strengthen you in goodness and prepare you for eternal life. We ask all this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Foundation, Phyllis Martin.
Also, um, we uh, offer prayer, uh, travel prayers for Lee, who's going to be traveling um, this week uh, on a vacation, and uh, we hope that he has uh, safe travels to his destination. Also, it is a joy to see um, Lori come this morning, um, as you know, and to see Pastor Bob, because we know that both of them uh, were suffering with, from COVID, as was uh, Lori's husband, Mike, and they um, have been healed and are back. But also, we want to, we did it last week, Lori, but we want to um, congratulate you and Mike on being grandparents. And it was Olivia, wasn't it? Yes, and uh, I'm sure she's a joy. Yes. Absolutely. Um, also, um, uh, uh, prayers of concern. We want to pray for Eloise, who is going to be having surgery on Tuesday. Our prayers go out to her. We also offer healing prayers for Susan's friend, uh, Ella Noble. Uh, we also uh, offer, um, oh, we're glad to see Sandy uh, back in the congregation with us and, and pray for uh, and, and uh, still offer health uh, prayers for her health issues. We are glad to see Andy returned, uh, able to return to the Andy informed me that the belt that he is wearing seems to be successful and his doctor is quite happy and Andy has uh, better movement and we're always glad to have Andy join us when he can. Uh, also, uh, Linda Runkles um, was in St. Agnes for a procedure. Is she home? Yes. Yes. She came home yesterday. I thought she was, um, but I thought I better ask before I... Um, announced that. Absolutely. Linda Runkles. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, also, Mary Lee Barnes um, is uh, Friday started uh, chemotherapy. She said that she felt pretty good after the first treatment of chemotherapy, so our prayers are with her. Our prayers are also for that chemo, uh, chemo and radiation group, especially John Leberman and uh, Jim Clark. Uh, also, um, we, uh, we said that we were glad to see Lori uh, and uh, Pastor Bob back, but there are people who are still suffering with COVID and our prayers go out to them also. Also, um, coincidentally, you know, I, I had never heard of Gia Barre syndrome. Gia Barre. Yeah. Gia Barre. Yeah, um, and when we were praying for David Ferguson in Tennessee, that is Sandy's cousin, he was diagnosed with that. And then, like two or three, uh, like three or four days later, Phyllis tells us that her aunt uh, Vina was diagnosed with it. So, um, uh, just in case someone doesn't know what that is, it's an acute viral infection that attacks the immune system. So, um, and it starts in the feet and can, can uh, affect then uh, gradually the whole body. So our prayers certainly go out to Aunt Vina and to David Ferguson and to any others who are suffering with this uh, rare syndrome. Um, are there any, oh, uh, Shirley Case is, was released Friday also and she is in rehab at Charlestown, so a joy and concern um, for her for that. Are there any other joys or concerns anybody would like to offer? Yes, Donna. Um, Joy's mom and I had a very nice vacation in Ocean City last week, and the weather was wrong, so we had great weather. So <laughs> that was good. And there's two young people that we've been praying for, Colt. Mm -hmm. um, he's doing well. Um, Video on Facebook of him walking um, with some assistance and therapy without the tubes all attached. He still has the trait and he's, they're still using that, but he's weaning off further and further. And then also, um, Brooks Jr., we've been praying for. He's a young man, he just started high school. He had surgery on both legs this time. Mm -hmm. And he's doing well. He started, he needs. 
the Lord, absolutely. The Lord and Brooks. Any other? Yes, Gail. It sounds kind of stupid. No. It was identity theft um, this week. Uh, somebody used my name and address in a fake passport and got $4,500 out of the bank in North Carolina. I was very shocked at first, but I started praying immediately, and I feel so much better. FDIC replaced the money the next morning, and um, they gave me a lot of help. Somebody still has my fake passport, but uh, it, God really answered my prayers. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you know they're going to a nice place. Pardon? They going to a nice place. <laughs> Forty-five hundred dollars. I would think so. <laughs> and passport. Yeah. Absolutely. Any others? Pastor, would you lead us in prayer? I will. Please, you want to update us on mom? Any update? She's not the same. Okay. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty and eternal God, as we have now completed our study of the Apostles' Creed, we know how much you have done for us. We know that you were willing to die in our place to offer us salvation and eternal life. You give us bread, you give us drink, you give us clothing and shelter, you give us so many things, you give us family and friends. We have a sign in our house that said, friends are God's way of taking care of us. We thank you for everything that you have done, Lord, and we thank you for all of the joys that we have experienced this week. But we also know, Lord, that there are still many people in our congregation in need of healing and of grace. And we ask your prayers for all of them, whether they're hospitalized, home from the hospital, facing cancer treatments, dealing with other illnesses, or whatever it may be. We ask your blessing, Lord, for those who are sick, those who are hungry and thirsty, those without clothing or shelter, those in prison and for those suffering from the ravages of war. We pray for those who are dealing with natural disasters, whatever they may be. So Lord, we come to you this day asking you to send your spirit down upon us. And as we will hear, Lord, in our epistle lesson and in our sermon this morning, we pray for godly wisdom. We ask all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught the apostles and us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our hymn number 472, Dear to the Heart of God. There is a place of quiet rest near to the
Psalm 1. Blessed are those who do not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of scholars. But their delight is in the law of the Lord. And on God's law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water that yield their fruit in season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. from the book of James, chapter 3, verses 13, to chapter 4, verse 8. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done in gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter evil and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom comes not from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where it, there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceful, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war, war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Adulterers, do not do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you suppose that it is nothing that the scripture says, God yearns jealousy for the spirit that he has made to dwell in us. But he gives all the more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. The Gospel this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 30 to 37. They went out from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they went to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, 
what were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued about one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them. And taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Let's turn to the Lord in prayer. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for being with us this morning. We thank you for inviting us into your house. We ask you, Lord, to open our hearts, our minds, our eyes, and our ears to what you have for us this morning. And we pray as James reminds us that we should not simply be hearers of the word, but doers of the word as well. And I ask you, Lord, either through me or in spite of me, that you might bring the word that each and every one of us needs to hear this morning. We ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So today we are going to look at part of the book of James. Now, James is a book that has a number of things that you're probably very familiar with. So earlier in the book of James, he reminds us to be doers of the word. And each Sunday when I begin my sermon, I remind us that we are to be doers of the word, not simply just hearers. Probably the most famous line from James is that faith without works is dead. Which basically means that if we have faith, but we don't act on it, then what have we done? James says at one point, if someone is suffering and all you do is pray for them, what have you done? And third, James talks about taming the tongue. And I suspect all of us from time to time find ourselves in situations where we need to tame our tongue. So today, we move from how do we talk to how we should live. And we explore James' advice about heavenly wisdom and drawing near to God. Now the book of James is about the flawed wisdom of the world and the wisdom of God. And it's fascinating to read how many descriptions James has of both earthly wisdom and heavenly wisdom. So here are some of the things he says about earthly wisdom. It is bitter. All of us from time to time are bitter about the world. It is rooted in envy. How often do we envy what others have? It is rooted in selfish ambition. It requires us not to boast and deny the truth. It is earthly. It is unspiritual. It is even demonic. And Bobby, I love the fact that you emphasize the word demonic. It is disorder. Think of how much disorder there is in our own lives. It is wickedness. And finally, it is evil practice. Now James contrasts that with heavenly wisdom. And again, he has a wonderful list here of the things that heavenly wisdom involves. It is wise in understanding. 
How many of us try and be wise and understanding, not only of what, what life brings before us, but wise and understanding of what others do to us and how others act? James spends a lot of time talking about being based on the good life. That's what heavenly wisdom is all about. It is living a good and righteous life. It includes deeds done with wisdom that come from humility. In our gospel lesson, what did we hear about? What were the disciples arguing about? They were arguing about who was the greatest. And we have that issue in our society that we always try and figure out, well, who is the greatest? Happens a lot in sports. Well, who is the greatest quarterback? Who is the greatest basketball player? Who is the greatest whatever? But it needs to come from humility. Heavenly wisdom is pure. Heavenly wisdom is peace-loving. We'll talk about peace in a couple of moments. It is considerate. How often are we inconsiderate of others? It is submissive. It is turning our lives over to God. It is, as someone said, I believe it was last week, to let go and let God. It is full of mercy. It is full of good fruit. And we heard about good fruit in our reading from Psalm 1. It is impartial. How difficult it is to be impartial sometimes. Because we all have our own agendas, don't we? Louise is now working with the grand jury in Baltimore County. And I'm sure a lot of times when you go through that, you have to be impartial about decisions that you make. You have to try and put yourself in the other person's shoes. Joe South had a song many years ago that was called, Walk a Mile in My Shoes. Before you abuse, criticize, and abuse, walk a mile in my shoes. And finally, it is about peacemakers who sow in peace to reap a harvest of righteousness. The Sermon on the Mount is probably one of the most interesting passages of Scripture because it kind of takes the world and turns it upside down. And in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called children of God. Now there's a prayer called the Peace Prayer that's been attributed to St. Francis of Assisi, although there is no evidence of his authorship. But it says, Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Now I suspect when a lot of us hear the word peace, we immediately think of the absence of armed conflict. But peace is much more than that. It is peace in our families, it is peace in our homes, it is peace in our churches. It is peace in our communities, our states, our nations, and throughout the world. Peace is shalom, which is a Hebrew word that doesn't simply mean the absence of war, but it means overall well-being. Now James talks about fights and quarrels. He says they come from desires. We desire what we do not have, so as James says, we kill. We covet, but, we can, but cannot get what we want, so we quarrel and fight. The Ten Commandments talk a lot about covet, right? Shall not covet your neighbor's wife or your neighbor's goods. 
Now, many of us know Matthew 7, 7 through 8. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds and to him who knocks the door will be opened. But James has a slightly different view of the issue and he says we don't pray well. You do not have because you do not ask. Sometimes we just simply don't ask God for what we want or what we need. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly. Because you want to spend it on your pleasures. There are many studies out there, and we've talked a lot in our creation moments about simplicity and the whole issue of how much do we have and how much do we want and how much do we need. And studies are essentially universal in saying that more money and more power do not necessarily lead to happiness. People who have things are always looking for what? More. More. Now in Genesis, Eve shows the difference between earthly and heavenly knowledge. Eve listened to the serpent, because what did the serpent tell her? You know, if you eat the fruit from that tree, you'll have the same knowledge as God. Beyond the wisdom that God had already given her. It was a matter of pride and selfishness. We must recognize that God's wisdom is greater than ours. God is God, and we are not. We must depend on God for, for everything. I have to tell you a story about Psalm 1. We went to a service many, many years ago where a young pastor was celebrating his first service. And he preached from Psalm 1. And he preached for more than an hour. And the service was about three hours. But Psalm 1 is a fascinating psalm about the difference between the wicked and the sinners and those who are righteous. And it says, the righteous shall be blessed while the wicked will not stand in the judgment. And that path leads to destruction. I always love the line from Psalm 1 where it talks about the wicked being like chaff that will be blown away. Now James calls listeners adulterers, lusting for what the world is, spiritual adultery. Friendship with the world is enmity, as opposed or hostile to God. If we are friends of the world, we are enemies of God. God yearns for the spirit that God put in us. God provides grace. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to who? The humble. James concludes today's lesson by telling us to submit ourselves to God. And I suspect for most of us, we haven't really done that recently. God, I give everything to you. I submit my life to you. James says that if we resist the devil, the devil will flee. I may have told this story over the last few weeks, but one of my former pastors had a note on Facebook where he talked about the fact that we let the devil into our lives and allow the devil to control things. If we resist the devil, the devil will flee. We must surrender our lives to God. And again, I remember 
the title of a book by Gail Sayers. For those of you who don't know Gail Sayers, he was a football player with the Chicago Bears, a great player. Some of you may know Gail Sayers from the movie Brian's Song, where Gail Sayers talks about, and we read it, we see about his relationship with Brian Piccolo, who died from cancer. The title of Sayers' book simply is, I Am Third. And when you go and you look at the subtitle of that, it says, The Lord is first, my friends are second, and I am third. So James calls on us to draw near to God. And if we do that, God will draw near to us. We know the story of the prodigal son. The prodigal son takes his share of his family's wealth and squanders it. He is so hungry that he would eat the food that the pigs were given. He decides after the end of this to return back to his father and beg for forgiveness. But when his father sees him, he was filled with compassion, ran to his son, threw his arm around him, and kissed him. When the son confesses his sins, the father calls for a celebration. This son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. That's what it's like with God. No matter what we do, if we come back to God, God will open up to us. God provides us with grace. Too often we do not use that grace to better ourselves, God's kingdom, and God's people. But when we fail, God is like the father of the story of the prodigal son and runs to us and embraces us. When we're lost in sin and lost in the ways of the world and the ways of sin and come back to God, what happens? Jesus says there's a celebration in heaven. There will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Close your eyes for a moment. Think about what it's like that you've returned to God and God's throwing a party. Alison Botke's book, 2001 book, God Allows You to Turns, started a series of 13 books about making bad decisions and bad choices. God offers healing, restoration, grace, and hope. The key is to draw near to God and ask for forgiveness. Are, the stories are dramatic stories of people whose lives were changed when they came back to God. So what do we do to get this heavenly wisdom in our process? How do we draw near to God? Richard Neil Donovan and R. Ken Hughes offer some suggestions. Number one, have reverence for God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Our relationship with God is not as equal. God is good, holy, powerful, awesome, loving, sovereign, forgiving, and merciful. We, however, are finite, human, and cannot control our lives by ourselves. Turn to God in prayer. Establish an intimate relationship with God. We must recognize God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Engage in worship. That's the purpose of worship. The purpose of worship is for us to draw near to God. Unfortunately, sometimes we simply hear the, hear the hymns, we hear the words, we hear the prayers, and it's just kind of automatic, isn't it? We all can say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, etc., right? Every time you come into church, 
you should leave having an experience. Our relationship to be with God should be enhanced every time we walk through those doors. We need to participate in the life of the church, in mission and ministry, in worship, in Bible study, in social events. Finally, we need to engage in mission and ministry. Our final song, Here I Am, Lord, was specifically chosen today because it reminds us that we need to be in the business of helping and healing others. Again, we heard in the Gospel lesson about this discussion about who was the greatest. And Jesus respond, responded by saying, anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. It is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is not me, myself, and I. It is not WIIFM or what's in it for me. It's about God's kingdom. We spend roughly an hour in church, an hour and a half at the most. We still have 166 and a half to 167 hours in a week. Think about that. Think about that ratio. 167 to 1. Now I know some of the skeptics will say, yeah, we sleep through part of that. Agreed. But how often can you do the work of the Lord outside of the four walls of this building? How can we use grace and faith to change the world? We are called as United Methodists to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Think about that. That's an awful, mighty responsibility. Not only just to make disciples, but for the transformation of the world. We are saved by grace and not by works, but we must show our wisdom by our fruits. The song reminds us, how do they know we're Christians? They'll know we are Christians by our love. Our middle song today reminds us that there is a quiet place, a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. So I pray this day, as you go through the coming week, and you think about the different kinds of wisdom, that you will think of ways that you can turn away from the ways of the world, and you can find wisdom in Almighty God. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. So for all of you who are grammarians, my first question is about the word faith. David Moss and others argue that faith is not just simply a noun, it's not just simply a thing. But it's also a verb. What does that mean? It means that faith is action. So what are ways that we can actually take actions to show our faith? When we bring donations. Okay. For the uh, uh, food donations or whatever donations we bring. We're reminded every Sunday to look at our pantries, to pick up a few things at the grocery store. Doesn't cost a lot of time, doesn't cost a lot of money. But for somebody that's hungry, a can of soup or a can of SpaghettiOs or whatever it may be makes a big difference. What else? Bobby? 
when we take opportunities to have um, uh, many times where we can uh, help others by being a listening ear, by taking them to the doctor, by just um, being with them uh, during their hard times. We're reminded we have two ears and one mouth, right? Which means we should listen twice as often as we talk. Bobby talked about listening. I know one of the things that I am still working on, I'm still not very good at it, but I'm working on it, is when I'm engaged in a conversation, I say to myself, just stop and listen. Stop and listen. And then how many times do we offer care for those in our families, for those in our communities? Offering somebody a ride to church, offering to just simply listen to somebody who needs help. That's faith, but that's faith in action. Again, James talks about the fact that faith without works is dead. We can't just simply say, I believe in God and I'm done. I'm good. No. You have to live it out every day. Any other ways we can show our faith? Through love. Through love. Loving others as you would have them love you. Go ahead. Studying the Holy Bible to mature our faith. So studying scripture to mature our faith. Second question. Do you ever feel that you're not good enough for God or good enough for other people? It's funny to stand up here and watch the wheels turning. Very interesting. I saw so many people go, think about it, thinking about it. Through the love of Jesus Christ, we're accepted into God's kingdom. And, and I feel like if we can experience that love personally, Perhaps we are good enough for God. Okay, so the question, the question I, would, I would ask you in response to that, I'll come back in a second, Bob. We understand that God accepts us. We ex accept that God forgives us. We accept that we understand that God considers us important. I remember a number of years ago, somebody had the expression that said, God don't make junk. Okay? But still, in, in your humanity, you sometimes feel that's not enough? Sometimes. Okay. Bob? Sometimes it's those second thoughts or doubts or times we allow the devil to come into our lives with his evil thoughts that we doubt what we're able to do when we have God on our side. I'm going to take that a step further. Bobby's saying... That we have second thoughts and doubts that the devil puts in our head. One of the things that I face and some others probably face is we know that things are always going to turn out right, and yet we still worry about them, don't we? We still worry about them. We still ask those what if questions. You know? What if? You know, I'm driving somewhere and my car breaks down. What if, you know, I get somewhere and I have the wrong time for my appointment? We know in our thinking that that's okay, but sometimes it's just hard. And go ahead, Gail. Through God's grace, this unmerited gives to us, we are good. So there, there's two schools of thought that I'm hearing here, one of which is if we're human and sometimes we doubt ourselves, 
But we're accepted and we have this unmerited gift of grace. And therefore we are good enough with God. Final question. When you go in, when you start feeling that you're not good enough, mm -hmm. you have to go in When we doubt ourselves, it's sometimes like depression. Last question. How can you be more successful in resisting the devil? What's that? Stop questioning every decision. Go ahead, Bob. Call him out. <laughs> That's right. Get, Get me behind me, Satan. Get those thoughts out of my head. Okay. Call him out. Call on God first. Call on God first. Prayer. Since we have considered the Apostles' Creed for the last number of weeks, we are switching up today on our creed, and we are going to do affirmation from Romans. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress? or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. No. no. In all things we are more than conquerors through the one who loves us. We are sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor the express, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our offering today can be made to the United Methodist Committee on Relief who, as you know, is often the first to arrive and the last to leave when we have disasters around the world. Let us turn to our doxology.